Welcome to another Python tutorial. We are continuing our exploration of the Google Maps API. So in our last video, we saw how we can do a basic search in order to go and get some information about particular places on Google Maps. Well, we're going to expand that and we're going to now take a little segment that we finished off in the last video where we were talking about the details. And we're going to go and see how we can go and get photos for a particular business. So sometimes you want to go and get the photos for a particular business or place. How would we do that? Well, it involves us kind of rewriting our script a little bit. And then also, it also requires us to use a different endpoint. So just to kind of, you know, go over what you're seeing right now. If you've seen the other videos, this should look all familiar. I just deleted a bunch of the code. Uh, all we're doing is we are importing our Google Maps library, we're getting our API key, we're defining our API key, we're defining our client, so this is our way of how we're going to go and make requests to then get information sent back to us. And then we do a nearby search, so we pass through a location in a latitude-longitude format, we specify a radius, so how far out do we want to look, and then we have some optional parameters. So do they have to be open now? No, they don't. They can be closed. And then also they can be, they have to be a cafe. So that's the category we are searching for. So I'm going to take this script and we're just going to modify it a little bit. But what we're going to do first is we're going to jump back into the documentation to go over, you know, the kind of the endpoint that we're planning to use. Okay. So in my last video, I did a couple things. First, I showed you how to enable the API. I'm not going to do that in this video. If you want to see how to do that, please watch the last video where I cover that. I'll make sure to put a link in the description. Okay. And then I also went over uh, the developer council and then some of the documentation. So if you want to see the places API, you can just go to developers.google.com and then places, web service, intro and then you will be taken here. This is the main overview and we covered a place search and place details. So now we're going to go to places photo. So you just click that and a new page will open up for you and it will tell you how to use this particular endpoint. And then basically it just goes over, you know, hey, what are you looking for? You know, what are you going to get back? What we're going to do is we're going to take uh, information that we're going to get from our places details and we're going to take that information and we're going to go make another request. So really, if you think about it, we're going to be doing three different requests. We're going to be doing a search, we're going to go get the details, and then we're going to go get the photos. So there's three different requests that we have to do in order to achieve this. So that's just for you guys to keep in mind. This can kind of add up if you're doing a lot of requests. So you just got to keep that in mind. And then when we make our request for a photo, there are certain parameters that we have to pass through. Now, if you go down and you scroll a little bit, you'll see the actual request section and it will tell you the required parameters. Well, one is your API key. That's taken care of by the client. One is called a photo reference. So this is just the photo ID that you want to actually go and get. And then next are the max height or the max width. So this is basically saying, hey, how wide and how high do you want this photo to look? So basically it's resolution. And then you're going to get back a raw image file. Um, so there's really just no like JSON string or anything like that. It's actually like raw image data. And what we're going to have to do is take that image data, put it into a file, and then we're going to open that file. So again, hopefully that didn't confuse too many people. But all we're doing is we're going to make a request using these different parameters. And we're getting this photo reference ID from the place detail. So this is the next page where I kind of explained this in the last video. Um, they don't show you in the actual description for the response, but if you scroll down a little bit and uh, you go to place detail results, you'll go down to P. So you'll get photos. So it's simply an array or a list. And then in that list, there's four different components that are sent back to you. So there's a photo reference, which is the ID, the height, and then the width. So again, this point, nothing too uh, complicated, hopefully. And we're just going to go and get the ID from that re result. So now that we've done that, I'm going to jump back into Visual Studios and we'll actually write the code. Okay. So here we're doing a search. Now we're going to go and get the place details. So we're going to 
first we got to define some stuff. So we're going to have to take our place results and we're going to have to go and get an actual, um, you know, ID. And so how do we get that? Well, I'm just going to write it a little bit more shorthandedly. I'm just going to do my place ID. So it's just going to store it in a variable. I'm going to go in my places result. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in the result sections of that actual dictionary of information. So technically it's just a dictionary, you know, a Python dictionary. And what we can do is we can access the key and it will return the information for that particular section of the dictionary. So here I'm going into the results section. And then from there, I want the first place. So I'm just going to pass through zero. And then I'm going to get the actual place ID. Okay, so I'm going into my results. I'm getting my first result. And then I'm getting my place ID. And just so you believe me, I'm going to print out my place ID. Perfect, so you can see it's simply a place ID. If you wanted the next one, you would just pass through one, two, three, whatever you wanna do, or you can just put it into a loop. So this section right here, get the place ID, and then we're gonna define our fields that we wanna go and get back from our actual request. Well, I want to only get the photos back, so I'm gonna define my fields, and I'm gonna set that equal to my fields. And it's simply going to be a list and it's going to be photo. So this is the fields that I want to return back. I only want the photos. And then I'm going to actually make my request. So make a request for the details. And so I'm going to say place details equals gmaps place and then place ID equals my place ID and then fields, no, no, close, equals my fields. So two parameters, place ID and fields. And then we're gonna get something sent back to us. We can just print that out. So let me print out what's sent back to us. Okay, so a lot of different information, as you can tell. So um, if you look right up here at the top, you see HTML attributions, the result. So this is the information we want. And then all it gave us was basically a dictionary object that has all the photos. So we're going to access this particular key, and we're going to get all the different pieces of information. Now, in our particular example, we're just looking for this little piece of information, photo reference, which gives us this huge key that is just astronomically long. Okay. So, sorry, I had to do adjust myself. Let's define our photo ID, photo underscore ID equals place details. And then I wanna go into the results. And then I wanna go into the photos And then I want the first photo. And then I want the photo reference. So, you know, there's different ways to write this. I'm just going to make it, again, as consolidated as I can. But, you know, keep in mind, this isn't the only way to write this. But now we have a photo ID. So let's make sure we can see it before we make the next request. Hopefully we should see a very long number. Oh, I had an S at the end, that's why. Okay, so here's our photo ID. Now that we have a photo ID, we can actually make a request for that photo. So we're pretty much almost there. So we're going to define our next parameters. We have our photo ID, now we just need to specify a width and a height. So I'll just put that right up here so it's kind of next to it and I want it a 400 by 400. So I've defined those parameters and I'll put it in its own little section. Define dimensions and then 
we can go and get the raw image data. So we're gonna make a request and we're gonna store in all that information in this variable called raw image data. We're gonna go into GMAPs. We're gonna go into places underscore photo. And then the first parameter is photo reference and we're gonna pass through our photo ID because that's what we gotta pass through in that one. And then we have something called max height. Well, that's simply just our max height. I mean, I mean, not that, it's our photo height. And then that is gonna be our max width, which is simply our photo width. So, define a request for the image data. So three parameters, an ID, a height, and a width. Now what's sent back to us, I'll show you it, but basically it's just a bunch of raw image data. But it's not gonna look like that. Raw, if I can type raw image data. Okay, so it's a generator object, response, iterator content. So in other words, if we wanna actually access this content, we have to iterate through it. And basically we're gonna iterate it through chunks and we're gonna take each one of those chunks and we're gonna save it to a file and then we're gonna open that new file. So let's dump all the information in a file and let us, we're gonna open a new file and we'll, we'll assign a file to a variable, but basically we're opening a file and we're gonna open and I'll put that something simple, my image, and then we'll do a JPEG, and then I want it to be open. Okay, so that's that component. So we've opened the file. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically dump each chunk into that particular file. So create a new file, and then uh, dump each chunk into the file. And then we're gonna say for chunk in raw image data. If there's a chunk, then simply write that to the file. So write the chunk to the file. Perfect. And then from there, you can close the file. Perfect. So let's double check this. We made our request, we got our image data. We're gonna create a new file and we're gonna take all that information and then put it into a file and then we're closing that file so we can save it. So I'll run it. Perfect, looks like it went smoothly. And then if I go in my little directory, you can see my image. Perfect. Now, if I wanna open this image from Python, well, I gotta do one more thing then. So I'm actually gonna to have to import a library. And this library allows us to easily, you know, in a sense, kind of open, uh, you know, different files that are related to images. I have it on another uh, thing, but basically it's called Pillow. And from Pillow, we're gonna import the image module. And then if you wanna actually install it, you can just do pip install pillow. That will install your library. Sometimes it comes, sometimes it doesn't. So depending on your system, you have to install it. But once it's installed, you import the image module. And then from there, you can actually open the image. So that's all you need to open it. And then to open it from within Python, I'm going to create a new variable, set it equal to image and I'm gonna call the image module, I'm gonna call the open method, and then I just need to pass through really the name of my file. Well, geez, what is going on? I can't select it for some reason. Perfect, and then we're gonna call the show method. So if we run it now, we should see it kind of just pop up automatically. Perfect, so you can see that the photo was opened and you can clearly see it. All the information is there for us. Now, you could technically, if you wanted to, you could do this in a loop. Um, 
you know, if you wanted to, you could get each photo for each individual place. Um, really what you would be doing, I kind of already have it laid out for you guys. Um, all you would do is really you're making your request for the results like you were doing before. Um, and then you're getting each uh, place ID from that result set. You're defining your fields. You're getting that information. So you're getting the detailed information and then you're gonna loop through each of the photos and the detailed information. Again, you're gonna get the ID, you're gonna define your width and your height, you're gonna make a request for that information, and then you're gonna save that information to a file. Now, you have to obviously change the file name or it's just gonna write over the existing file. So, and then that's kind of all exactly the same. So here, again, you're just taking all the chunks of data and you're putting it in the file, and then you're also um, what is it? You're saving it so that way it's it's in. We're actually opening the file at that point. So this is kind of if you wanted to do it within a loop. Again, this is how you would lay it out. So again, more of a simple example, nothing too super complicated. Just at least showing you how you can leverage it. All right, but uh, that does it for today's video. So if you have any questions about how to get photos or any of that information from Google, um, you know, please put them down in the comments below. Also, if you could make sure to like the video, we always appreciate the support. And if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates as we release new videos. So um, after this one, I'm hoping to move into uh, directions. Uh, so the Google Maps directions API, it's actually kind of fun. I was actually having a little bit of fun with it. I think you guys will too, because it comes in handy. Might not necessarily have a particular use for it yet, but. I think it's cool that you can just find directions writing a simple script. So cool. Thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video.